It's now time for your Election Crimes Bulletin with Greg Pallas. And this is Dennis Bernstein with Greg Pallister. We are uh, really uh, glad to have you back just in time, Mr. Pallister. I know you've been very busy working on a very powerful new film. We'll, we'll mention that at the end, but uh, we had to bring you back because of what happened this week in terms of uh, uh, the voting, uh, the Federal Voting Rights Act was huge and devastating, really. You want to lay this out for us? Yes, absolutely. Fair Fight Georgia. Stacey Abrams' organization sued to the vote, this uber right-wing vigilante group. When I say vigilante, um, they are the people that put out lists of 360,000 Georgia voters to challenge their right to vote. Now understand, they may be also all right-wing nuts, but the real danger is, of course, the governor of Georgia and the secretary of state, who, who the governor who signed this law that said that a group can can challenge unlimited number of voters, but they have to have evidence, supposedly, that these are illegal, ineligible voters. But what happened was, is if you saw my film Vigilante, George's Vote Suppression Hitman, uh, you'll see on camera that we had a woman, Pam Reardon, a Republican Party official who personally challenged 32,000 people. She said she got the names from True the Vote. She literally wouldn't even pay the money because it, it was too expensive to, to print out the name she was challenging. So she handed in a thumb drive and said, don't count these voters' votes. The way that they designed the list is it was mostly black people and voters of color who were removed from the voter rolls or had their votes challenged. So Stacey Abrams, the, the elections passed uh, due to a, a terrific campaign that uh, I was involved with, Rosario Dawson, uh, Black Voters Matter, etc., got most of these voters back on the rolls, but still, you know, just enough that Joe Biden was able to squeak by in the state by 11,000 votes and, and uh, Reverend Warnock by about 100,000. But you have to imagine, a third of a million people had their votes challenged. And so Fair Fight said, this violates the Section 11B of the Voting Rights Act, which says you can't intimidate voters. Now, understand, in our film, and a man who was also a witness in the case for Fair Fight Georgia, was Major Gamaliel Turner, who is of Georgia, Fort Benning, Georgia. He is career military, 70 years old. He was assigned to Fort Wainimi here in California to because of the war in Ukraine. And the Republican Party chairman in around in the Fort Benning area challenged his right to vote, saying he wasn't a Georgian. Well, you don't get a, you don't get assigned to California or Iraq or Afghanistan or anywhere else, and then lose your vote because it's president, you know, because you've been assigned by the military somewhere else temporarily. But they, oh. this is what they were doing, and so the the court ruled this was not intimidation under the Voting Rights Act, which gives these guys a free pass, not only in Georgia, but understand, it's a federal court, Dennis. And that means that this ruling applies nationwide, unless there's another ruling somewhere else, or the Supreme Court steps in and says, no, this is clear intimidation. In the case of, of Major Turner, he was told that it was only two or three days before the election. They said, oh, you can vote as long as you fly here from California, fly to Georgia, and prove you are, even though you're in the military, you prove you're a citizen of the United States and you have the right to vote. Greg, I want you to elaborate and say a little bit more about the implications. This is really an action in support of big, dark money in campaigns. So say a little yes. bit more about True the Vote and really the, the expansive implications of this kind of decision. There's two things. One, uh, let me tell you the, the implications first. Joe Biden won Georgia by 11,000 votes. That's it. Now, I'm nonpartisan. I don't care who the voters vote for. That's not my job as a journalist. What my concern is, is that people have the right to vote and have their votes counted. You know, if it weren't for a massive, massive campaign to get people re-registered, these are black voters who have been voting for decades, thought they already had won the right to vote in the Voting Rights Act 50 years ago, and suddenly their votes aren't counting. But it's not just Georgia, because it's a federal court decision. We now have... True the vote saying 
that they're not going to that they're going to expand their challenges from Georgia to Arizona. Don't forget, Joe Biden only won Arizona by ten thousand votes. So if they challenge two hundred thousand people, and even if one in ten sticks, though there's no reason why they can't won't all stick. I don't know what'll happen, but if they flip just a few votes. Carl Rove, you know, Bush's brain, said that if 1% of the black vote, that if Biden loses 1% of the black vote in Arizona or the Hispanic vote in Arizona, Trump wins that state. If 2% of the black vote in Georgia is suppressed, Trump will win that state, assuming he's running against or any Republican running against Biden because it was been so close. They're taking these challenges to Wisconsin, to Iowa. I was in Texas, which is true the vote's base. And while you may consider Texas red, the Republicans don't consider it red. In fact, Ken Paxton, their secretary of state, the guy is about to go to prison, by the way, he has proudly said that if it weren't for his actions stopping mail-in voting in um, Houston, that Trump would have lost Texas. So true the votes actions have massive national implication, and this could easily cost Joe Biden re-election. And yeah. he's drowning already. I, so if last yeah. time was close, you know, if, if the Dems stick with uh, Biden, it's looking really ugly that it would only take a, a few votes to, g- right. to give and us again, a it's Donald about who whether wants to be a dictator. Right. Let, 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 it, it's not a question of whether it should be Biden or Trump. It's a question of why don't we let the right. voters decide and not let this exactly. right-wing group decide. Now, here's the thing. This group is funded. You know, they like to pretend, oh, they're just, you know, like the head of the group, Catherine Engelbrecht. She says, oh, I'm just a, uh, a housewife or something. A housewife backed yeah. by the Bradley billionaire family, the uber right-wing billionaires, out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, who put two billion and let me un- underscore that two billion dollars into blocking voters. In addition, you've got what appears to be it's it's hard to nail it down exactly because, as you say, it's dark money. But you know, the our chief investigator uh, Lenny Badpenny has uh, uncovered that they also seem to have, there's a trail of money coming from Charles Koch. But the important thing is that this is all dark money going into stopping people from casting their ballots, stopping Americans from casting their ballots. And by the way, while the court said, oh, well, they had some legitimate questions about these voters, of the 360,000 voters that they challenged, not a single one out of a third of a million, not one, was identified as an illegal voter. No one proved that one was... In fact, True the Vote put up a $50,000 bounty if someone could prove a single illegal voter. No one collected because not one person was illegal, despite a $50,000 bounty to, to hunt them down, but despite the challenge. Now, understand, again, it goes nationwide now. And this is... You know, it was, I won't say it was completely ignored by the press, because it was on page one of the New York Times. But I got to tell you, they didn't understand this, right. the, the real massive That's, implications. I mean, this is why we have you, Greg Palast. And I uh, I guess um, you, you brought this out very clearly yes. uh, right before you got thrown out of, uh, I believe it was uh, Pam Reardon's uh, house, who yes. challenged some 32,379 voters, and she didn't know and she didn't know any of them. Right. In fact, she said specifically, she said, I got this list of 32,000 voters from True the Vote. They vetted them supposedly. I didn't do anything to vet my challenges. I didn't know any of these people. I didn't call them. I don't know who they are. I just got this from True the Vote. Now, one of the things that the judge ruled, are you ready for this, that Stacey Abrams' group did not prove that there was a connection between True the Vote's actions and the challenges. But I should say, Stacey Abrams' lawyers tried to enter our film, Vigilante, into evidence in the court, in the courtroom. And the judge said, you can't do that. So without my film, they didn't have the proof that they needed. They didn't have the connecting proof that they needed. They didn't have her confession. The other thing that they did is that, the, that what you could call the star of our film, Major Turner, 
whose vote was denied because he was assigned here in California. Um, he was a witness in the case. But again, they said, well, two things. One, uh, they couldn't prove the connection to True the Vote because even though, again, they refused to allow our film into the courtroom. The second is that they said, well, he wasn't really intimidated. He was just inconvenienced. I don't think having to make a last minute at your expense flying to Georgia and proving as a soldier that you're an American citizen for a black man, and he, I should mention he's African American, and that his father was the co founder of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference with Martin Luther King, is that for, he said, for a black man who went through the civil rights movement, this type of challenge. Is devastating, and and if you go to my website, thegregpals.com, and read my article, you'll also see the news clips showing the confession by this GOP official, showing Major Turner, frankly, in tears. This is a tough military man, but to say he wasn't intimidated? Are you kidding me? Let me break here for a moment. We have a few minutes left, and I want to sort of, uh, this is an incredibly important voting story, and we're going to be picking this up in a month or two when things get really hot, but we we wanted to bring you in because of this decision. But you are working on another part of this picture. I mean, there are so many levels of voter suppression unfolding in this country, and and this is something you've really devoted uh, chunks of your life to. You're working on... A new film, they're unrelenting in terms of undermining the rights of people of color, of indigenous people, to vote. I'm actually working on two, because what's happened is, especially in light of this decision, I just spoke with Gerald Griggs, president of the Georgia NAACP. And he and Black Voters Matter and other groups have said, ask me to now update the film, and not only in light of this horrendous decision, but make it national. So Vigilante and will it's a great be film, Greg. Day. It's a great film yeah. you made. And, and now we're going to have to make it hell. greater. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. if the, the court would not allow it into the courtroom, but whether it's in the courtroom or not, we're going to update it because we're going to make it a national film. It would be America's vote suppression hit men. And now we've gone to Arizona, to Texas, and to other states, Wisconsin, where these challenges, vigilante challenges, are expanding. So number one, we are now going to re-release the film in the fall. Martin Sheen is our producer, Rosario Dawson is our narrator, and we got to now take it national. The second film I'm working on is definitely related. It's called Long Knife, and it is about coke oil and the Osage Nation. What happened was is that, uh, as I mentioned on the air with you before, but quickly, the Osage Nation, uh, the indigenous group, they were the richest people in America in the 1920s because they had struck the they had the biggest oil strike in America, and they thought they were rich, and they were rich momentarily, until the U.S. government assigned guardians to every Osage. Any full-blooded uh, Osage was given a guardian. They were declared incompetent by the U.S. government. And their guardians stole their money and in most and in many, many cases killed the people that they were supposed to be guardians for. They killed as many as two hundred Osage to steal their oil. But then that's in the film Killers of the Flower Moon, which will be released next week on Apple streaming. I, I just and watched we, it. Very powerful. It's sort of the dramatization of the of the stealing of the Osage wealth. Right. Uh, but the thing Leo, is the, Leonardo DiCaprio. DiCaprio. Starring Leonardo DiCaprio, but uh, Leonardo has, uh, working with me, his father is my producer, George DiCaprio, and Leonardo is helping us make a film of what's happened in the hundred years since those killings. And what happened to them yes. is something called Coke Oil. Charles Coke, using Coke Oil, stole $2 billion worth of oil from the Osage, basically stole all their all their oil, about $6 billion in today's money. These people were really dirt poor, and coke oil was simply stealing the oil from them. And the government, the Bureau of Indian Affairs, just kind of watched and shrugged its shoulders. Even though the Bureau of Indian Affairs is now the supposed guardian of Osage interests. Now, you have to ask yourself, why do Osage need a guardian? The chief of the tribe I'm working with, Standing Bear, is a top trial attorney. The head of their uh, Oil Resource Council, Everett Wallet, whom you will see in the film Killers of the Flower Moon, kind of playing himself, 
Edward Waller, he's a, he's a college graduate. These are engineers. You know, you have to understand the, the – I just interviewed uh, Elise Patchen, a, an Osage Indian, who is also the, uh, the, found, the re-founder of the Oxford University Poetry Review. She graduated from Harvard and Oxford. She is listed by the U.S. government as incompetent. Understand what's going on here. They are not allowed to handle their own affairs. This is insane. And where dark money comes in, where the two films come together, is Coke, to protect himself, has run these massive funding, massive vote suppression campaigns because you can't steal people's oil. You can't steal their properties unless you steal their vote because they'll, they'll throw your, the politicians who are your puppets out of office. And this is really serious stuff. In fact, Senator Dennis D. Consini told me that when he was about to issue a report saying Coke oil stole oil from the Osage, he was warned. Unfortunately, it was by Bob Strauss, who had been chairman of the Democratic Party. He was threatened that if you say one word about Coke stealing the oil, Coke will spend whatever money it takes. And he'll do it secretly through dark money to destroy your political career. And he did it. He did it. So Coke using dark money was able to destroy political careers. And he adds to that this vote suppression element so that if you try to, you know, because he knows if there's only one Charles Coke, but there's a lot of us. So if we get to vote, he loses. That's amazing. And it, it, it's, you know, I've made this point before, but it's so important because indigenous communities across this country, Native Americans across this country, have been organizing in recent years. They sort of gave up because of the oppression and the genocide. But there has been a whole new wave of Native Americans who are fighting for the vote and fighting for their vote. And this is, in part, what's got the extreme right wing's attention, because all of a sudden you've got an activist group of Indians willing to take this issue on. And so that the the repression, you can expect it, right, is going to come down harder and they're going to be thinking about new ways to make sure uh, that the Osage do not have a say and that indigenous communities continue to be marginalized. So this is so timely, Greg. Well, I have to say there's a connection between the two films. In fact, we don't know which scene to put in which film uh, in some <laughs> cases because, for example, in the case you mentioned the Osage, they are very sophisticated on this issue of vote suppression. So even though they're in Oklahoma, you understand the Osage are in uh, Osage County, Oklahoma, that's where their reservation is. And they went to Arizona. The state of Arizona tried to block, and I should say when I say the state of Arizona, the Republican state legislature in Arizona has bent over backwards to try to stop um, natives and reservations and Pueblos from voting. So, for example, they actually eliminated all polling stations, and I kid you not, completely eliminated all polling stations from the Yaqui Pascual Reservation, all of them. Now, the only way that Biden won by 10,000 votes is that the Osage Nation from Oklahoma sent representatives and help to the Yaqui Pascual and other groups in Nevada and Arizona saying, here's how we can get your, your vote put in. And so they got people uh, addresses so they could get mail-in ballots. Understand, uh, on reservations sometimes, an address is two, you know, 200 yards west of the gas station. Well, you can't get a, a ballot that way. So they helped them get ballots, fill them out, and brought them in so they would not have to drive a 100 miles round trip to vote. And that saved Joe Biden. Not that Biden never said thanks, but it doesn't matter. The important thing is that the, the vote. American natives are active, they're on the move, and they're not going to let anyone steal their vote. And so they're working with the Palace Investigative Fund in helping us uh, get this film out with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, who's also helped, Beautiful. who's also done a hell of a lot of work promoting Amazing. our voting rights work. Yes. And, and the Moon, the Flower Moon film is worth uh, checking out as well because it really it gives sure is. Kind of riveting, riveting history about uh, this uh, and contextualizes your work. 
uh, happening here mm-hmm. and now. We've got to leave it right there. Greg Palace is going to be back. He's uh, working hard on this film. We're going to talk to him. Uh, we're going to give him a little break, and then we're going to pick this up yes, a little closer you. to the election. Greg, thanks for coming out of hiding to do this with us. In very okay, I had to get out of the film edit. Thank you so much. You know, we had to bring you Dennis back from far, far yeah. away to do yes. this. Uh, okay, but, well, uh, we'll, we'll accomplish that, but we'll keep stay informed, stay alert, check your registration. Thank, and go to gregpalace.com for the rest of the story. Yeah. Okay, gregpalace.com. Thanks. Thanks, Greg. Be safe.